Okay, this is Math 2, Unit 8, Lesson 5, some homework help today. So we're going to be looking at inscribed angles. All right, so the first one we're going to look at is number 3. So for number 3, and again, one of the things you can think about is there's lots of, of uh, first steps you could choose to make. We're going to arrive at the same answer here eventually, um, but however you visually see what's going on in the problem, just start there. Start with what you see. Um, so I might be starting from a different point than you may or a friend might be, but here's how I see the problem. Okay, so first of all, I see that I have this inscribed angle A inside the circle, which forms this arc of 144 degrees. So if I'm first of all thinking about a, the A part, A is going to be 144, the arc, divided by 2, and that's going to be what my value of A is. So 144, looking across here at A, Half of that is 72, so I know that angle A is 72 degrees, okay? I can do the same thing with angle B. I see here that this is my inscribed angle for angle B, and it comes out to the far side of the circle right over here at the 48 degrees. So once again, when I look back this way for angle B, angle B, I can take the 48, and I divide it by 2, and I come up with 24. So at this point in my circle, I'm going to erase my little marks here, I have a 72 here, and I have a 24 here. I don't know this one, but because the triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those two together, 72 plus 24, to give me 96. And to find out the missing angle sum of that one right here, I'm going to do 180 degrees, how much inside, is inside of a triangle, and take out the 96, the sum of the two angles that I know, and 180 minus 96 is 84 degrees. So this space right here, I'll just shade it in for you, is 84 degrees. Well, if I remember back from previous lessons, this angle and angle C are what we call vertical angles. They share the same, the same point here. And so since they're a vertical angle, then I know that 84 degrees is also what angle C happens to be. So A is 72, B is 24, and C is 84. Okay, so that's how I went about solving that there, using the inscribed angles, cutting them in half, cutting it in half, figuring out the missing angle inside the triangle here, and recognizing that's vertical to find the other missing angle. Let's look at number four. For number four, we're going to do the same type of thing. Um, once again, um, what I initially see is I see that I have um, 124 on the outside of this inscribed angle. So that tells me that this point right here, 60, this point here, is half of 124. So 124 divided by 2 is 62. So I can go ahead and write a 62 in this space right there. Now I'm not done yet. I have to figure out what's going on here. I have a 62 there, and now I have to figure out the other missing parts. Well, a couple ways of doing it here. Um, one of the theorems that you might have learned is that if I have a diameter that goes across the circle here, okay, this is theorem 10.9, I believe. Uh, if I have a diameter that goes across here, the, this, because it's a hypotenuse, if I have a diameter and another chord, the angle across from the, the line that's a diameter is going to be a 90 degree angle. So that's just one of the theorems that you might have been taught in your class, that that angle A will be 90 degrees. Okay? There are other ways to get there to prove it, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm not going to say that that's 90 yet. I mean, we know it is, but let's see how else can we figure this out. Let's take a look at this. I know that that diameter cuts the circle in half. I know that this arc right here is 124, which means this space right here is whatever is left from the 124. Um, sorry, of the total 180. So if I take 180 degrees, which is the distance from here all the way around, and I subtract 124, what I'm left with then is 56. Okay? So my arc measure for arc uh, C right here is going to be 56 degrees. Okay? 
for that C point. Now that I know that that C, I can, or sorry, that C is 56, I could divide that in half to find out what B is. So I'm going to divide 56 by 2, and 56 divided by 2 is 28. So B is going to be 28 degrees. So I can write 28 degrees right there. And now, just to prove that that was actually 90, if I take my 62 and my 28 and I add them together, I end up with 90. That's the sum of those two angles. To find out what's missing, I do 180 minus 90, and I find out that 90 degrees is what's left for A. So it proves that the theorem correct, that that's 90. So there was a shortcut if you knew the theorem, but if not, you could have solved it going the long way about it. So A is 90 degrees, B is 28 degrees, and C, as we said before, is over here at 56 degrees. Okay, kind of a long way of doing that, but it does work. Let's look at number five. Um, initially, I wasn't going to do number five, but I thought, well, it is a quadrilateral, so let's take a look at it. Um, again, a couple different approaches. Um, when I went back and kind of watched some other videos for how this is taught, I, I learned a theorem that I didn't know. Um, and that theorem tells me that the, the angles across from each other in a quadrilateral form supplementary angles. Supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees. So I can quickly solve for D and C by looking for supplementary angles. So let's do angle D real quick. I already have a 92, so 180 minus 92 is going to tell you what angle D is going to be. And 180 minus 92 is 88 degrees for angle D. Okay? I can do the same thing. I'm going to just write it off to the side here. I can do the same thing for angle C. 102 plus C should equal 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and subtract from 180, 102. And what you come up with there is 78 degrees for angle C. So we're at 78 degrees. Okay. So now that I have a 78 and an 88, I can use what I know about inscribed angles to figure out the rest of this. You could also work backwards and go on the other way. Again, like I said, I wasn't aware of this theorem when I first started. That made D and C simple, uh, a lot easier to do. But there were other ways as well. So what are those other ways? Here we go. So the next thing I have to do is figure out, okay, I got to figure out B and I have to figure out A. That's where it gets it to be a little bit more complicated, okay? I started, first of all, with, um, with looking at this space right here, which I'm going to call X. I know they didn't say to solve for X, but this is what I did. I took my 92 that I was given. I know that that's 92. This 92 is half of this arc right here. All right, it's half of that. In this arc, I have 140, and I have an unknown value of x. Correct? If I take that and I divide that by 2, so my 140 plus x, and I divide it in half, I should end up with 92 degrees. Okay? So to solve this, I cross multiply 2 times 92 is going to be 184. So 140 plus x equals 184. I subtract 140 from both sides to find out that x is going to be equal to 44. So now when I come back to my triangle, my circle up here, I can go ahead and write 44 up here in that space. So I have 140, I have a 44 for that part portion of the arc. I'm doing all these little steps so that I can eventually get to the full, you know, the full solution. So I'm putting all the little pieces together. All right, so that's 44. So let's use the same process now to find out what perhaps, um, well, we did see already is there. I have to find out what B is going to be. Well, B, if I look at B, B is inscribed angle C. All right, there's angle C, angle C, which again I know to be 78 degrees already, 78. So what that tells me, same problem as before, is if I take 44 and I add it to whatever B happens to be, and I divide that by 2, 
I should come up with whatever's across from that whole arc segment, as which is 78 degrees. So in doing that, 2 times 78, we end up with 156 equals 44 plus B. I subtract 44 from both sides, and we find out that B equals 112. Okay? So now we know that B is 112. We already did D over here. We've done C over here. I can go ahead and add my 112 to my picture. And now I'm just left with A on this side. Because I already found out what D was, I knew that D is 88 degrees, I can again look at my picture here. And I'm going to get just a new color just to help you out a little bit visually. I've got a lot of colors going on, a lot of things. Here's D, right? This is my inscribed angle D, right there. That's my D part when we said the angle itself was already 88 degrees which is going to be half of whatever this arc is going to be. Okay, So using the same idea as we did before, make sure I have some space here for you, I know that 88 degrees is going to be equal to this arc, 112, plus this arc, A, all divided by 2. And when I solve that, I have 88 times 2, which gives me 176 equals 112 plus A. I subtract 112 from everything, and we end up with 64 for the value of A, or 64 degrees technically. Okay, these are all degrees there. And that's how I went about solving it. Now when I look back at my notes from what I did last time, I see that my notes are even a little different from how I did it this time. Again, just to go back to say, there are multiple ways of getting to the answers you're looking for. But as you look at this problem by itself, this is all my work for this problem right there. So a lot of little steps were taken in order to find A, B, C, and D, but you are trying to solve four problems at once. Okay? Let's take a look at number six before we flip it over to the back side here. Number six just wants you to find out these angle measurements here. This one's a lot simpler. We're going to be dividing and cutting things in half, or we're going to be multiplying by two. So arc EF, which is here, is going to be two times whatever the inscribed angle is. So two times 55 is going to be 110 degrees. If I look at this angle measurement here, angle E, okay, I can figure that one out, but right now I don't have any on this side to figure it out. So I'm going to start back over here with angle F, which is part C. Angle F is going to be half of the arc measurement on that side. Half of 96 is 48. So this one here is 48 degrees. At this point now, I have a little bit of a triangle, don't I? I have a 55, a 48. I don't know that one. I can add them up. 55, 48, 13, 103. And what's left from 103 for this remaining angle right there? I do 180 minus 103, and we come up with 77. So this angle measurement here is 77 degrees. So now I have part B done. Now to find out what DF is, I'm going to take 77 and multiply it by 2, and we end up with 154 for measurement of DF. So I'm multiplying by 2. I'm dividing by 2, I'm finding the missing angle using 180 minus the sum, and then I'm using that to multiply by 2 to find the other one. It's just a series of, of little equations you're going to have to do to get to your final solution. Okay, let's look at the back side. Today's lesson is a little longer than normal, sorry about that, but a little more complicated than the number of steps we're doing. So number 11. Number 11, more inscribed angles, but now we have some lines that are tangent to the circles as well. Okay, so the same theorem uh, still applies here, that if I have this angle measurement, then whatever is on the inside here is going to be half. So 182 divided by 2 is 91 degrees. So x is 91 degrees. Because this line is tangent, it's also supplementary, which tells me that I can figure out this part right here by doing 180 minus 91. And we come up with 
come up with, sorry, my computer was turning off there, 17 minus 9 is 8, and we come up with 89. So in this space, we actually have 89 degrees. So now going the other way, instead of dividing, I can multiply this by 2. 89 times 2 is going to be equal to 178. So my value for x, x equals 91 degrees. My value for y, y equals 178 degrees. So a couple steps to get there, but we eventually got there. Okay, and our last one today is number 13. 13 is a little more complicated as well, but it's going to be helpful to have that theorem I mentioned back um, on the previous problem. Remember back over here in number 4, I talked about that if you have a, a triangle inscribed inside of a circle and that you have the high, this part here, you have a diameter, that the angle across from the diameter is going to be the, the right angle, 90 degrees, and this forms the diameter actually forms a hypotenuse. So I'm going to use that principle to solve for number 13. Okay, just makes it a whole lot easier here. So, a um, couple things. <laughs> Let's see how we can do this here. First of all, if I take my principles I know, I can take 102, and I can draw my line and go, where's my inscribed angle? Angle, There it is. This angle is going to be half of that one. Half of 102 is 51. Okay? So that's 51. No problem there. When I look at this full angle, I know this whole angle right here is 90 degrees. Why? Because I have a diameter and an inscribed triangle. So that's 90 degrees there. So I have a 51, I have a 90, which means I could figure out this angle measurement as well. Let's go ahead and do that. 90 plus 51 is 141. So 180 minus 141 is going to be 39. So I'm left with a 39 degree angle on this side. Okay? Do I need that for the solving the problem? No. I'm just doing it as it is. And this is what it is. All right, so I turned down my radio. All right, let's keep on going here. So the next thing I want to do, um, I, nice part that I did, I look at the 64, and I notice that the 64 is going to go with inscribed angle B, right? So because the arc is 64, B will be half of that. So B is going to end up being 32 degrees for B, 32. Okay, so so far I, I know what I don't know what A is yet. B is 32 degrees. We're getting it somewhere. Uh, I don't know C. Now A I can solve because because it is a right angle. I can do 90 minus the 32 that I have, and I end up with 58 degrees for A. Okay, we're moving somewhere. So this is 58. I got 39, 58, 57. I have a lot of measurements here. Okay. And now what's left is this C value right there. Now for the C value, the C is this angle outside the triangle between that and that line there. So it's a little, little different, isn't it? Okay. So to solve that one, now I got to figure out what could that be. Well, here's how I went about it. I looked at this diameter and I said, all right, if this is the diameter, right, and this whole arc value is 102, what I have left over here in this arc is 180 minus 102, which is 78. Okay, so because the arc is 78, one of the principles here is also going to be that now this inscribed angle right here, C, which we're looking at, is also equal to half of the arc. So 78 divided by 2 is 39. And so the measurement for angle C is 39. Now, if you look real quickly, what else do you notice? Something we did earlier, we figured out this 39. Well, this 39, this inscribed arc or angle, is that same arc measurement. So both of those share the same angle degree, angle measurement. So if I had known that those are the same, I could have used this 39 value and recognized that's inscribed, that's inscribed, they share the same arc, and when they share the same arc, they have the same angle, 39 degrees, which is another one of your theorems for this unit. All right.
that's it. Have a great day.